Among the Hidden, Chapter 17, Part 1. Luke spent practically every second of the next three days either reliving his secret visit, visit to Jen's or planning another one. The first day, a government inspector came out to examine the garner's crop, so Luke stayed in his room the entire day. The second day, it rained, and Dad spent the morning doing bookwork in the house. In the third day, Dad was back in the fields. But when Luke crept over to the back door promptly at 9 a.m. and daringly flipped on the light switch, he got no answering flash from Jen's house. Maybe the clocks in her house were slow. He left the light on for 15 whole minutes, terrified the whole time that someone besides Jen might see it. Finally heartsick, he switched it off and climbed with shaky legs back to his room. What if something had happened to Jen? What if she were sick, dying even, alone in her house? What if she'd been caught or turned in? Just from the little time Luke had spent with her, he could tell she took a lot of risks. It never occurred to him that knowing another person would give him something else to worry about. He steadied himself by leaning against the wall at the top of the stairs and reminded himself of less frightening possibilities. Maybe one of her parents was just out running errands, not working, so they were going to be home soon. Maybe he tried to think of another safe reason Jen hadn't signaled for him to come, but he had so much trouble picturing her ordinary life that his imagination failed him. He found out the next day when he risked a dash to Jen's house as soon as Jen answered his signal. Where were you? he asked instantly. When? Yesterday? She yawned, sliding the door shut behind him. Did you try to come over? I'm sorry. Mom had a free day and made me go shopping. Luke gaped at her. Shopping? You went out? Jen nodded nonchalantly. But I didn't see you leave, Luke protested. Jen looked at him as if, he ser if she seriously wondered if he had a brain. Of course not. I was hiding. The back seat of our car is hollowed out. Dad had it custom built. You went out? Luke repeated in awe. Well, it's not like I saw anything until we got to the mall. Two hours of riding in the dark is not my idea of fun. I hate it. But at the mall, you got out? You didn't have to hide? Jen laughed at him in amazement. Mom got me a Ford shopping pass a long time ago. Supposedly, I'm her niece. It's good enough to convince the store clerks. But if the population police ever found me on a roadside stop, I'd be dead. There you have it, my mother's priorities. Shopping is more important than my life. Luke shook his head and sat down on the couch because his knees were feeling a little shaky. I don't know, he said. I didn't know thirds could do that. What if mother and dad got him a forged pass? For a minute, he could almost picture it. They could hide him under the burlap bags in the pickup truck bed until they got into town. Everybody in town knew mother and dad, and... Everybody knew Mother and Dad only had two sons, Matthew and Mark. You went to the city, he said. Well, yeah, Jen said. You don't see any malls around here, do you? What is it like? Luke almost whispered. Boring, Jen said. Really, really boring. Mom wanted to buy me a dress, who knows why. So we went to one store after another, and I had to try on all these dresses that scratched and pricked and poked me. And then she made me get a bunch of bras. Oh, sorry, she said when Luke blushed a deep red. I guess you don't talk much about bras at your house, do you? Matthew and Mark do sometimes when they're being dirty, Luke said. <laughs> well, bras aren't dirty, Jen said. They're just torture devices invented by men or mothers or something. Oh, Luke said, looking down. But anyway, Jen said with a bounce that propelled her off the couch. I checked you out on the computer and you're all right. You don't exist. Not officially, anyway. So you're safe, and... Hearing Jen say that so flippantly, you don't exist, made Luke feel funny. How do you know I'm safe, he interrupted. Fingerprints, Jen said. When Luke gave her a blank look, she explained. My brother Braun went through this phase where he wanted to be a detective. Not that he ever would have been smart enough for it. And I remember he still had a fingerprinting kit. So I dusted for your fingerprints on the things you touch, just like on TV. I got a really good print off the wall, and then I scanned that into the computer, linked into the National File of Fingerprints, and voila! I discovered your fingerprints don't exist, so neither do you, officially. She made a mocking face for emphasis, and Luke wanted to ask, 
The population police can't find me because of what you did, can they? But he understood so little of what she explained that he didn't think it would help to ask anything, and Jen was already on to the next thought. And anyhow, you seem trustworthy. So, now that you're safe, I can tell you about the rally and show you our secret chat rooms and everything. We're going to stop here for today and finish the chapter tomorrow. Have a great day.